Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Bitcoin right now in a bit of a slump, trading at about 32,400. Uh, and uh, still, guys, you know, it is a red day today. Um, nothing new, though, in the space. Still this sideways trend. I mean, I'm getting kind of sick of mentioning this every morning, as you guys can see. Uh, the crypto space, not really losing too much of its market cap, nor is it gaining too much in market cap. And uh, Bitcoin dominance still hovering in and around this level. Uh, you know, the other day it was 45% to date, 46%. You guys can see most coins down, you know, anywhere between 2 to 5% here on average. So uh, a bit of a red day in the crypto space. And, you know, this is what we tend to see some red days, some green days, uh, keeping that equilibrium between buyers and sellers at this stagnating price point. So not too much movement for Bitcoin and uh, XRP, of course, like all the other altcoins still kind of seeing the same thing trading right now at about 60 and a half cents. So uh, nothing really uh, interesting to report. Uh, low volume as well. So not too much trading activity going on. Uh, I saw this guy's from XRP Crypto Wolf. Visa approves Australian startup to issue debit cards for spending. And uh, yes, you will be able to spend XRP along with Ethereum and Bitcoin. The move by Visa to allow the issuance captures the growing interest in cryptocurrencies for Australians' economic market. Australians will soon be able to spend crypto via existing brick and mortar point of sale. Uh, with the issuance of new physical debit cards, the Australian Financial Review reported on Wednesday, global payment giant Visa has approved local Australian startup crypto spend to begin issuing debit cards for the startup's users. Those using the crypto spend app can then pay using their Bitcoin and other supported cryptos at retail stores and hospitality venues. Instead of needing to convert from crypto to fiat like some other offerings on the market, uh, users of crypto spends app can make direct purchases. So, uh, you know, this is one of these new features that I'm sure a lot of these companies are really going to have to pay attention to. The idea that people are going to own crypto and going to want to not convert their crypto to fiat, but actually spend their crypto uh, for goods and services, right? And guess who's issuing the card, guys? ASX listed Novati will issue the card, which is expected to hit Australia in September, while custody of the crypto holdings will be handed over to New York licensed custodian BitGo, AFR reported. Crypto Spends app allows users to spend their crypto, pay out to their account, and pay bills with supported cryptos, including Bitcoin, Ether, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. This card is going to be issued by Novati. Just wanted to get back to that. A Ripple partner. So another interesting point here with regards to these uh, newly approved Australian Visa and debit cards uh, for cryptocurrency purchases. Great news there. Wanted to thank the Cryptic Poet for posting that. Also, this guy's from the Wrath of Kahneman. Ripple figures prominently in this report by the Central Bank of Egypt, where blockchain in fintech is mentioned. So this report was from about a year ago, but it is interesting here. Although not MENA-based, the fintech startup Ripple has collaborated with MENA Bay. Thanks. For example, Ripple, US-based technology company, collaborated with National Commercial Bank NCB in Saudi Arabia that will enable cross-border payments, allowing new payment channels to open towards North America and Asia that were not available before. Ripple also partnered with Kuwait Financial House in 2018 to offer cross-border payment transfers securely and instantly for their customers. However, they still need the approval of the Central Bank of Kuwait to launch the new Ripple service. Uh, and the thing that he points out here, which I also find quite interesting, this is at least a year old, this report, and it predates the National Bank of Egypt's deal with Ripple. Uh, so that, well, at least it predates the announcement of the National Bank of Egypt's deal with Ripple. So I thought that was interesting. Some good digging here by the Wrath of Kahneman, a cluster of banks now in the MENA region uh, running on Ripple. And one can only imagine that this is just going to spur on more uh, banks in that region to get onto RippleNet just because, uh, you know, banks within a closer geographic proximity to one another are likely the banks that are in closer competition just as a general rule so if your competitor is using RippleNet uh, for cross-border transfers of course you're going to look at them and you're going to say well I got to get on board with the latest technology in order to satisfy my clients needs as well so uh, again another interesting find from the Wrath of Kahneman want to thank him for posting that uh, this from the Cryptic Poet guys with regards to VeChain News World Artificial Intelligence Conference uh, this is officially indexed VTrust built on VeChain as innovative front runner of blockchain application in 2021 so this is big, guys. Big news for VeChain holders. Recently, VeChain Foundation announced that VTrust built on VeChain Thor is officially indexed as innovative frontrunner of blockchain application 2021 by WAIC. The committee
Committee recognized VeChain as the perfect example of merging public blockchain with the public sector. I think that is supposed to be private blockchain, maybe, with the public sector connecting all stakeholders from government to citizens. And here's the tweet, guys, from VeChain Foundation, the official VeChain Twitter account. VeChain Trust built on VeChain Thor is officially indexed as uh, innovative frontrunner of blockchain application 2021 by WAIC. The committee recognized VeChain as a perfect example of merging public blockchain with the public sector, connecting all stakeholders from governments to citizens. And uh, the CEO, Sunny Liu, also attended the WAIC and spoke on WAIC regarding VeChain's mainstream adoption in the business. Down here, just uh, a quick word from CEO of VeChain, Sunny Liu. I will link this in the description if you guys want to read further. I wanted to thank the Cryptic Poet for posting that. Uh, and I saw this guy's from Mike Manfield here on Twitter. MoonPay, which provides payment infrastructure for buying and selling cryptocurrency, has selected FIS, a Ripple partner for merchant acquiring services in more than 160 countries and 80 digital currencies supported by the rapidly growing company. So this article just out uh, from Finextra, uh, MoonPay creates tools that enable web and mobile developers globally to accept payments for cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ether, as well as non-fungible tokens or NFTs. Uh, the market for cryptocurrencies and NFTs is growing rapidly as consumers globally become increasingly comfortable buying and selling digital assets. So MoonPay was seeking an experienced payments partner to support its continued growth. The firm will use WorldPay from FIS Merchant Services to process consumer credit and debit card purchases and sales of cryptocurrencies as well as NFTs. And uh, down here is a quick quote. Our goal at MoonPay is to provide simple, powerful, and painless experiences for customers around the world and buy and sell cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and other digital assets. This coming from Ivan Soto Wright, CEO and founder of MoonPay. As a leading provider of card to crypto payment processing services, WorldPay provides the global scale footprint expertise and seamless acquiring services we need to meet our business goals, enhance our speed to market, and continue our expansion into new geographies with our advanced crypto infrastructure. So great new developments for Ripple partner FIS, making this deal with MoonPay, allowing more more connectivity, more uh, ways to purchase uh, such things as cryptocurrencies and NFTs. And T-Holbetic XRP posted this, guys, with regards to another Ripple customer, Alfardan Exchanges becomes MPay's exclusive remittance provider. So let me just read you guys this real quick. Alfardan Exchange LLC joins forces with MPay's contactless ecosystem and landmark deal to provide remittance services. The UAE's leading exchange house, Alfardan Exchange, signed a deal with the contactless payment ecosystem, providing more choice, uh, convenience, and flexibility to customers. And just over here, another article with regards to MPay. Dubai Economy signs MOU with MPay to accelerate cashless licensing transactions. This was uh, from back in December. Uh, Dubai Economy has signed a memorandum of understanding with the Emirates Payment Services to enable payments relating to commercial licenses through the MPay smart application, the world's first contactless instant credit lifestyle payment ecosystem. Now Alfarden, a Ripple customer, merging with MPay, partnering up with them to provide better services in that region. Again, more news uh, just coming out of the Middle East and, uh, you know, just to kind of go back to this tweet here by Wrath of Kahneman, we are really seeing uh, this area of the world, namely the Middle East, develop uh, with RippleNet specifically, whether it is through that uh, higher level with uh, national banks, central banks in the area, or, uh, you know, even at the retail level, uh, we are seeing that permeation from RippleNet uh, really kind of uh, influence what's going on with payments in that part of the world. So I wanted to thank T-Hole Betting XRP for posting that. Now, update on the SEC lawsuit guys, Southern District Court of New York has scheduled a telephonic conference to further the hearing on the SEC's plea against the deposition of former SEC Director William Hinman. The hearing is scheduled for July 15th, 2021 at 3 p.m. Uh, and since this is happening in New York, that would be 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you guys were wondering, yes, uh, this conference will be made available public. The telephonic conference will be made available public uh, with dial-in information provided before the hearing. XRP to the moon. <laughs> Sarah Netburn, magistrate judge of the district court for the Southern District of New York, will be looking over the conference. Defense lawyer James K. Phelan tweeted today informing everyone of the upcoming events in the crypto community's historic lawsuit. And uh, here is the tweet. Former director of the SEC's Division of Corporate Finance, William Hinman, could either make or break the case, guys, in this lawsuit. Ripple is aiming to put Hinman on the stand instead of his high rank at the SEC, and the defendants will then bring it into context. This is not written 
right. Uh, with regards to 2018, the, the 2018 speech he had. So in his speech, Hinman claimed Ether to not be a security, as we all know, while comparing it to Bitcoin. Hinman's superior position at the SEC paired with his statement against XRP's status as a security is capable of completely turning the tables against the SEC. So this is still a very uh, hot button issue uh, with regards to this case. Uh, the fact that w will they get Hinman on the stand? Will they not? Of course, we know the SEC filed a plea to quash Hinman's deposition and against the former plea by Ripple requesting to put Hinman on the stand. SEC has further asserted that the plea for the deposition of a high ranking officer by Ripple is irrelevant as their only proof of Hinman's unique firsthand knowledge is circumstantial. So I wanted to get a little bit more into this uh, because Jeremy Hogan actually weighs in on this too, uh, giving kind of a negative slant to what's going on here. So here is, uh, again, the original tweet from James K. Fillin breaking court schedules the telephonic conference. And guys, again, that date is July 15th at 3 p.m. to discuss the SEC's motion to quash the deposition of William Hinman. Uh, the court will provide dial-in information for the public in advance of the conference. Uh, a few people down here chiming in, like Agent Smith V3, guess someone is back from their vacation. All these guys just want to relax. It's the summer. This is the time when most people take their vacation. Dictator Know-It-All saying WTF is there to discuss. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know, for some of us here, we're just thinking, you know, either you do it or you don't do it. Uh, let's just make a decision about this. Uh, neat and ready down here uh, asking Jeremy Hogan. So it will be decided after the telephonic conference whether to deny or grant the motion to quash the deposition. And Jeremy Hogan says, my guess is that she will issue a ruling at the hearing because the deposition is scheduled for the 19th. If not at the hearing, then she only has one or two days to put an order in writing. So that's interesting. Um, Jeremy Hogan also follows that up with this. So he gives his quick take on the scheduling of the conference. And he says, my quick take on the scheduling of a conference on the fully briefed motion is that it is bad for Ripple. If she was satisfied by the briefings, she would have simply ordered the deposition to take place. She might need more from Ripple if she is to order the deposition. So... We will see. Not sounding too optimistic about this. However, I am looking forward to seeing a Jeremy Hogan video. Uh, I hope in the coming days. Martin Volk asking down here, Jeremy Hogan, maybe she wants all of us in the room ready on the phone when she smacks the SEC back into their place. <laughs> Jeremy Hogan, LOL. Yes, maybe she likes an audience. And Agent Smith V3 here brings up an interesting point. He wasn't senior enough to object. He is retired. He is in the best position to talk about the thought process that went into ETH determinations and why that process does or doesn't apply to XRP. So, hope you're wrong, but if you are, whose fault is it? And as a private citizen, do they even have standing to object? Carbon Neutral down here asking uh, an interesting question. In cases like this, uh, would the judge normally make a ruling during the conference or need another couple of weeks to think it over. And Jeremy Hogan responding to that, in this case, she basically has to rule this week because the deposition is scheduled for the 19th, guys. I would expect she will rule at the hearing. So the 15th, which is tomorrow, we could get that final determination as to whether uh, we will hear if uh, William Hinman will be put on the stand or not, will be deposed by Ripple's lawyers. Matt down here saying, you've been wrong before. Jeremy Hogan responding, I'm still sticking to Hinman deposition taking place. I just don't like this setting of a hearing. So uh, some mixed reactions here from people in the XRP community and, uh, you know, Jeremy Hogan, obviously. We are always very thankful when he puts in his two cents. Zero bugs asking... Could be that the judge just says, the speech is there and all of us knows what it says. What else do you need? And Jeremy Hogan saying, you know, yes, that's exactly what she would be thinking if she is leaning towards not having the deposition go forward. So uh, some things, guys, clearly to think about with regards to this. Um, and I just wanted to bring this up too from Anders L here on Twitter. Unpopular opinion. Regulations was always the issue with XRP for Ripple. This is why Brad's major banks in 2018 haven't happened yet. And for those of you guys uh, who weren't in the space at that time, I will get to that in a second. He goes on to say, to me, it seems obvious he didn't lie, but didn't expect the behavior of the SEC when Hinman Clayton didn't comment on XRP like they did BTC and Ethereum. 
Good news, it's being solved now with the lawsuit and perhaps some new regulations are incoming. Do you think it's all part of the plan? When lawyers look into the Hinman slash Clayton's ETH ties, does it seem likely? The frustration has been obvious from Ripple's employees if you just watch. And uh, Nietzsche Buck's down here saying, I agree, he spoke outside of the approved PR and that is why you don't do that because plans change. So there could have been a narrative that was set up in place Hinman obviously uh, didn't follow the narrative, and this is why now he is being scrutinized heavily under the microscope. Any sources to Brad's major banks in 2018? Of course, we do know that that was a quote that he said, and uh, these quotes are made up by Steedus here on Twitter. By the end of 2018, major banks will use XRapid at that time. Uh, RippleNet was called XRapid, XRP as a liquidity tool. And by the end of 2019, there will be dozens of banks using the XRapid tool. Now, let's not forget, guys, these timelines have clearly shifted. I know XRP haters are going to say, see, 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 look, it didn't happen. Therefore, XRP is crap. It's garbage. Nah, uh, uh, uh. The timeline has been shifted. We know this, uh, you know, nobody could have foreseen this major lawsuit taking place. Shane Sokolsky down here saying, uh, because SWIFT currently has a monopoly on the banking cross-border sector and is known as a cooperative organization owned by its users, mainly banks, huge money is made with its pro rata reward system towards usage within the banks and corrupt regulators are in bed with them. And so, you know, this is this just goes back to that whole narrative that we follow with regards to, um, you know, even with the riddles that Bearable Guy puts out, whether you love him or hate him, uh, he's got a point. There are powers that be, there are things that are going on behind closed doors that are really kind of trying to stifle uh, this new and emerging financial infrastructure that is coming in. You know, the big banks, uh, the SWIFT system, they have a monopoly. They are making a lot of money and they do not want that to be disrupted. Enter Ripple, enter XRP, a new world system that is going to really change the face of finance. And that is threatening. I mean, quite frankly, that is threatening. Uh, Crypto Tunga down here saying, I have a theory that the agreement with the major banks are done, just waiting for SEC to settle, to be announced. So what do you guys think here? Do you think Jeremy Hogan has a point? Do you think Judge Netburn will let us know tomorrow whether Hinman will be on the stand on the 19th or not? Tell me down in the comments what you guys think, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.